What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 WWE wrestling win streaks, but fans gave no Fs. Uh, it's not a good thing when you have a particular win streak and the fans don't care. Like the whole objective is to get yourself over even more by having this nice win streak and the fans don't give a damn. It's like, oh, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> It's not a good sign. It's not a good sign. It could be a multitude of things. Maybe the matches don't mean much. Or maybe the character is not getting over with the fans. Um, so you got to find a way to make that, that happen. Because when you do have a streak, there's a reason why you're giving someone a streak. is to get them over. To make them, you know, seem like a very big deal or very important. So when that doesn't work, it's not a good sign. So we're going to check out some of the moments where... It didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. And um, no matter how good the streak was, people just didn't care. So we're going to check this out by Russell Lamy. Appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on the channel. Let's get right into this one, man. When booking a win streak in pro wrestling, the streak in question should be engaging and entertaining. Iconic streaks such as Goldberg's win streak in yeah. WCW and The Undertaker's historic WrestleMania win streak are sure. memorable because they maintain fan interest and the respective streaks managed to become a legitimate mm. draw within their two distinct companies. However, wrestling companies are known to deliver a win streak which is so underwhelming and lifeless that fans collectively wonder why the company is putting in so much effort into making the streak a prominent part of their programming. Yeah. So with that being said, let's look at 10 wrestling win streaks that nobody cared about. No. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Number 10, Vito. One of the more infamous gimmicks of the Ruthless Aggression era saw Vito begin to cross-dress. The gimmick would be presented as comedic in nature, and it was obviously designed to make Vince McMahon laugh. That's all it was. It's just because Vince has a, a very sick humor, so that's all it was. Elements of the presentation have aged terribly, as heels on the SmackDown product at the time, such as JBL and MVP, would declare their disgust in a man wearing a dress. Whilst the gimmick was purely comedic, Vito did manage to go on the most successful run of his career. Vito would enter a four-month win streak, which was impressive, but the fans didn't really care about Vito's That's win wild, record. bro. Vito's win streak would end on a random episode of SmackDown when he was defeated by Elijah Burke after interference from his partner, Sylvester Turkai. Number 9, Vladimir Koz... <laughs> didn't, even, didn't even know he had a win streak. That's that's wild. <laughs> oh man, good old Vince McMahon. Blog. When the WWE debuted Vladimir Kozlov, I remember. They had remember the hype groups. for him. WWE wanted Kozlov to be the next. You can big. tell they they he was supposed to be the next big bad that they were gonna push, like give him a mega push, and they were in the they were in the process of doing that top heel in the company and they were going to stop at nothing until Kozlov reached his full potential. The problem was that Kozlov lacked any type of charisma and his matches were falling flat. Yeah. Despite the audience not giving a damn about anything Kozlov was delivering, WWE persevered with his strong presentation and Kozlov would remain unbeaten for months. Mm -hmm. Eventually Kozlov would be pinned at the No Way Out pay-per-view in 2009. This pinfall loss would come in an Elimination Chamber match when Kozlov was pinned by The Undertaker. Around I mean, this time period... I mean, it is The Undertaker, so yeah, he, you can get pinned by him. WWE were so adamant on Kozlov being the number one heel in the company that they were going to book him to take on The Undertaker at WrestleMania 25. Before these wow. plans were canceled, WWE, specifically Vince McMahon, were even considering having Kozlov be the one to end the legendary win streak of the dead man. Oh, and this story God. came directly from The Undertaker during an interview with BT Sport. By the time we get to WrestleMania, we pretty much knew what was going to go down, but there were a few people, I guess, that he wanted to break the streak. Vladimir Kozlov, he wanted him. Number eight, Rusev. Good God. The fact that he was slated to face The Undertaker at WrestleMania 25 is... No. <laughs> I'm so glad that didn't happen. And the fact that Vince was even thinking about having him in the streak? No! <laughs> Jeez. We dodged multiple bullets, y'all. <laughs> 
Upon his main roster debut, Rusev was instantly propelled to one of the top spots on the mm -hmm. roster. Rusev would win matchup after matchup, and whilst his in-ring work was stellar, his character was somewhat controversial, and it was making fans lose interest in anything Rusev had to offer. Yeah. Thankfully, although the streak Rusev was on was stagnant, the way his streak ended was rather memorable. Rusev would drop the US title to John Cena at WrestleMania 31, and if a wrestler is going to have their streak broken, there's yeah. no shame in one of the greatest of all time being the one responsible. Yeah. Number seven, Tank at Which, I'm not gonna lie to you, I know people didn't like that when it initially happened, but when John Cena won that United States Championship, oh, he went on a tear. So it kind of actually worked out. It was actually a good thing he did drop it, because he went on a tear with that United States Championship, so. Abbott. One of Vince Russo's most infamous projects as head writer for WCW was Tank Abbott. Ooh. Abbott had a legitimate MMA background, and Russo believed that Abbott was going to be a huge financial draw for the company. Abbott was given win after win before WCW randomly had him lose to Sid Vicious on Nitro. <laughs> Following Abbott's streak ending, WCW would seemingly regret this decision, as another win streak would ensue, but it wasn't before long that Abbott would be turned into a full-blown comedy act. Oh, no. Just before Abbott's transformation into a full-time comedy character, WCW were genuinely planning on putting the top prize in the company on the WCW star. According to Abbott himself during an interview on Hannibal TV, when news leaked out that he was going to win the WCW world title, the locker room freaked out. I was just cruising on the road, doing my thing, and trying not to make any waves in the water. Russo, I think it was Russo, I got told after the fact that they were going to make me WCW heavyweight champion in some kind of battle royal, and I was going to win it. Oh, wow. And all the boys freaked out, saying I wasn't from this sport and that I couldn't take it. So they ended up at the very end of the day, they told Sid Vicious that I was going to lose to him. There was a lot of heat coming down the pipe on that one. They didn't want to give the strap to someone who didn't have the pedigree of professional wrestling. Uh... However, once I got into wrestling, I actually found it very fun, and I'm all into it. Everything about the culture and everything else, so the powers that be did not let me win the strap. Wow. Six, the politics are like, nah, he's not from this, from this cloth. That's kind of crazy. That's crazy, bro. Damn, <laughs> he could have, he could have, you know, maybe had a good run. Who would have known? But damn. <laughs> Mansoor. Mansoor's win streak in WWE became sort of a meme within the wrestling community. Mm. Mansoor went on a win streak of around 49 victories, and it became a running joke that whenever WWE were having a pay-per-view event uh -huh. in Saudi Arabia, Mansoor was going to get the victory no matter who he was facing. Yeah, I the remember this. <laughs> the even reported that the streak was being kept up to appease WWE's benefactors in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. It would be Mustafa Ali who would end Mansoor's streak, and according to Mansoor, during an interview with Talk Sport, the streak wasn't even a thing that WWE were keeping track of. Wow. It was absolutely not a thing. I remember when I realized I hadn't been losing, I was like, this is weird, what's going on around here? And then some fan was like, hey, did you know you haven't lost since like August of last year? You're like 30 <laughs> and I didn't know that. That's crazy. And then a part of me was like, what's the purpose for this? It even came to a point where I would actually go to people in the office, I won't say who, but I would go to them and say, please, I want to lose, I'm begging you, I want to put this guy over. They were like, no. I think something that might have had to do with it was a conversation I had with Vince McMahon in Saudi Arabia, where he was like, we're going to get you gearing up to join us on the main roster. Uh... Number five, <laughs> he said, I want to lose. I'm like, no, you're not losing. It's not time for you to lose yet. <laughs> The majority of wrestling companies in North America have attempted to emulate Goldberg's win streak from WCW. Some companies have mm -hmm. been successful at this, while others have failed in a huge way. Yeah. And unfortunately, TNA's presentation of Crimson wasn't one fans fondly remember. To TNA's credit, they put a ton of effort into making Crimson credible, as they had him go on a 470-day win streak, but the fans just Damn. weren't connecting with anything he was doing. The company then made the bold call to have Crimson Streak end at Slammiversary 2012, when former TNA champion James Storm would defeat him in just two minutes, which was a rather anticlimactic end to such a lengthy streak. Number four, Lars Sullivan. And here's the thing, we've we've seen the recreations of people trying to recreate Goldberg's like epic, you know, win streak he had. Uh it they even tried to do it with Jade. I think you can do it, especially if they look like a star and they're presented like a star. It can be done correctly. 
you know, giving that Goldberg essence, you know, depending on how you book it. But at the same time, it really comes down to once again, that person's personality. Like it gotta be more than just squash matches. It, they gotta have that personality, that superstar presence to make people care. Cause at the end of the day, it's cool. You beating up jobbers and stuff. All right. But you got to make people care that you're doing that. You got to have that charisma. You got to have that character. Goldberg was uh, a freak of nature. Dude, he was just high impact and people love that. He didn't need to be this charismatic. Uh, I can't even say it. A uh, charismatic. I can't say it, y'all. I, I, I feel so stupid. I can't. Karamazic. I keep saying Kar why am I saying Karamazic, y'all? Charisma, bro. You gotta have the wrist. I'm keeping that all in. I'm not even gonna cut that. Karamazic. I don't even know what I was trying to say. The charisma. You gotta have some charisma, bro. Gotta have some riz, as the kids say. I the point is, he didn't have to have that to be over he was he was goldberg high impact that's it but nowadays you have to have charisma and, and a good character to get over i'm keeping that in i'm not cutting that out that's in there for sure <laughs> even though lars sullivan's run on the wwe oh, main roster man. was brief he somehow managed to remain unbeaten for the entirety of his run Sullivan was a controversial name, and it was never made clear why WWE were so insistent on making Sullivan a star. Yeah. Sullivan's in-ring work was below average, and his <laughs> character was insanely generic. The crowd was never able to connect to him, and even multiple win streaks, those being the one he had in NXT and the one he had on the main roster, did absolutely nothing to help him get a reaction. Nope. What Sullivan's booking highlighted is that not every monster push is going to work, and sometimes, wrestling companies have to think outside the box when it comes to their presentation of talent. And didn't he say some wild shit, too? That's what, uh... And I think that's what got him released. I want to say he's he said some wild shit. Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe it was him that said some wild shit, so... Number three, Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey's initial WWE run received mostly positive reviews, but it was her unbeaten streak that fans didn't seem to care for. Mm. Rousey, during her first run in the company, defeated names such as Nikki Bella, Alexa Bliss, Nia Jax, and even Sasha Banks, but her win streak was never truly alluded to on WWE TV. It wasn't. And whenever social media posts surfaced regarding her streak, fans lacked any type of connection to it. Weirdly, when Rousey's streak was eventually broken at WrestleMania 35, it wasn't presented as a big deal that Rousey had finally lost, and there are a few potential reasons for that. Rousey would lose to Becky Lynch in a match which also featured Charlotte Flair, uh, and the match itself received mixed reviews, with yeah. some labeling it as disappointing. Uh, Additionally, it was widely reported that the final spot of the match was botched, meaning that all the focus was on the botched spot rather than Rousey's downfall. Yeah. Number two, and her run, her first run was good. I think a lot of people enjoyed her first run. I don't think people really too much cared about it, like her win streak or whatnot. Um, but at the same time, yeah, that main event just it didn't work. Charlotte shouldn't have been in that match. It should have just been Becky and Ronda. I think people would have cared more. In that WrestleMania it was like fucking eight hours long, so it was a lot of things working against them during that match for sure. But her first run was pretty enjoyable. Tatanka. Tatanka's win streak is often labeled as the most pointless win streak in WWE history. <laughs> oh, Tatanka damn. Tatanka was undefeated for around a two-year period. Damn. And did little to elevate his stock in the company, as hardly anyone was paying enough of an interest to even wow. catch on that Tatanka was unbeaten. On the October 30th, 1993 edition of Superstars, Tatanka suffered his first televised defeat in the WWE, losing to Ludwig Borga, of all people. This was such a dire end to the streak. Damn, bro. He pinned him with just one finger. Just boop. That's cold. That's disrespectful. And it was clear at this point in time that WWE had completely given up on the oh! world star. 
Number one, Lord Tensai. I remember WWE this. I remember this. He signed Matt Bloom in 2012. Oh, man. Yet the issue is that fans <laughs> were fully aware of Bloom's prior WWE personas. Yeah. Those being Albert and A-Train. Yeah. Therefore, despite WWE's best efforts into making Bloom, who was now going under the name of Lord Tensai, a huge star, it fell flat immediately. Yeah. Tensai would have his own win streak, and he would even pin top WWE uh -huh. star John Cena. There were even rumors that WWE were going to have Tensai defeat CM Punk for the WWE title, but thankfully, this never Thank materialized. God. The WWE audience would heckle Tensai in every single match, and eventually WWE had enough, and the Tensai push and win streak was brought to an end. Tensai would lose to John Cena, and Tensai would move dramatically down the card, yep. never reaching the main event scene again. Yeah. Well, there you have it, folks. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, bro, as soon as they brought him out, I'm like, what are we doing? We know that's fucking A Train. What are we doing? What are we doing, Vince? Like, this don't even make sense. What are we doing? Stop it. We're not idiots. This don't even work. It's not even creative. It's just lazy. I, I, I remember that period of them trying to get Lord Tensai as this major threat, and no one cared. No one cared. That lets you know. Sometimes you could have this amazing win streak, but if people don't care about the character or the charisma, none of this matters. None of it. You could be winning for two, three years straight. No one will care. So it all comes down to the character at the end of the day, especially nowadays. People care about the characters and being unique and being different. Anybody can win. Can you win over the fans? That's the biggest battle. But comment down below. Let me know some other pointless win streaks outside of WWE if they weren't listed on this list, like in AEW or maybe in TNA or New Japan, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Let me know some other win streaks that you just thought was just pointless. It didn't matter. It didn't help. No one cared. But I appreciate all the love support you guys showing on channel Road to 150K, and I'm still here on Speedy YouTube Wrestling Champ of the World. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See you on next one. Peace.